Hi guys and welcome to the next video. In a previous video we spoke a little bit about jogging the robot using the joint movement. And I said we're going to cover using the frames in the next video. So here we are. But before we start there are a few things I wanted to tell you regarding the frames. So in most of the cases robot will have three frames that you can jog in. The word frame, tool frame and user frame or base frame or other naming depending on the robot brand. They work however the same. So for you to understand how the frames are working, uh, I made a short presentation so you can figure stuff out. So what can I say? Let's get started. Okay, here we are. Uh, the presentation, what I meant, uh, I think we need to go back in time a little bit, uh, probably to your uh, high school times. And for you to understand how frames are working, you need to know what is a Cartesian coordinate system. I do believe that you remember from school uh, the 2D Cartesian coordinate system and it has two axes, the X axis and the Y axis. And there was a point located somewhere on that uh, system. And for you to find its coordinates, you were moving, counting the lines on the X axis, counting the line on the Y axis, and you got the point coordinates. Correct? Yep. And with the robot, it's the same thing. The only difference is that we use 3D Cartesian coordinate system. How does it work? Like this, you have the 3D Cartesian coordinate system. You have the same, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So right now you have the third coordinate, which is the z. And how do you calculate the point? The same way, you count x, you count y, you count z, and you get your point coordinates. What's extra in the robot? There are uh, angles that you need to know about to know the exact position but I don't want to go into the details of that right now I will explain that when I will show you the example uh, I'm sure you will figure it out but just so you know the angles mean if the point is uh, twisted the, actually the vector is twisted uh, around the x-axis the y-axis or the z-axis but I explain that a little bit later for now, we're going to talk about the word frame, which is the basic frame for all of the robots. It's always located at the same place. It always looks the same. Um, okay, what if we have the robots mounted on the wall or upside down on the ceiling? What about that? Is it going to be the same? Uh, we'll see. Watch the video. I'm going to answer that question, that question later. So. Let's get started with Fanuc robots. Let's go. Okay, the Fanuc robots. So the first thing we're going to talk about is something called the right hand rule. And that's the rule I want you to remember whenever somebody will ask you about. If that's going to be middle of the night, if that's going to be at the bar, if that's going to be at the customer side, you gotta know it because that's the basic for robot systems and for using the robots. That's the thing that is going to save you whenever you need to jog the robot and you don't know what's going on because you just came to the place or you never seen that robot before or whatever. It's a golden rule. It applies to all of the coordinate system and all of the robot types. So let's get to it. So what do I mean by the right hand rule? So remember the coordinate system I, we talked about a little bit earlier? It has the x, y, and the z axis, correct? Okay, so you're going to use your right hand to determine whether or not the, that position of the x axis is straight, left, up, or in whatever else direction. So we spoke about the word coordinate system. And I said that it's always located the same. When, I mean, I ask you, is it? What if the robot is going to be mounted on a wall or on a ceiling? 
For FANUG robots, the world coordinate system never changes. So it doesn't matter where the robot is mounted, the world coordinate system will always stay the same. Uh, you will ask me where is it located? So, stand behind the robot or next to the robot. And take a look at the robot base. And the world coordinate system is located at the robot base. And to be more exact, it's located where you have the middle of the axis 1 and motors on axis 2. On the intersection of those two, that's where your world system is located. So, now take your hand and you want to put that coordinate system, that 3D coordinate system over there. So take your right hand, put it like this, and right now that finger is going to point into the X positive direction, that finger is going to point into Y positive direction, and that finger points into Z positive direction. So remember that, because we're going to use that for jogging. So now you know, whenever you come to the robot and somebody will ask you to move it, you know you're going to choose the world coordinate system and jog using that system. Okay, so let's see how that works on the robot. So I'm using again the robot guide. Uh, if you guys have the real robot, it's the same thing. There is not much of a difference. So let's turn on your robots. Let's turn on your teach pendants, reset the faults, hold the deadman switch, reset the faults, and let's try to jog the robot. So, first of all, like always, change your coordinate system to word. Got it? Okay. Adjust your speed. Don't do, you, don't want, you don't want to move too fast. Got it? 25% for me is a good choice for start. Okay, so now, you want to know how the robot will move, right? So take your hand, and you know that that's X, Y, and Z, right? Yep. Now take a look at the teach pendants. There are keys called X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus, Z plus, Z minus. And then there is rotation around X, Y, Z. So what does it mean? That means when you hit the X plus, the robot is going to move into a, in a straight line forward. If you're going to hit the Y plus, the robot is going to move left in a straight line. And when you hit the Z plus, the robot is going to, to move up in a straight line. Can you see the difference between the joint coordinate jogging in a joint coordinate system and using the, the frames, the word frame? So when we are using the joint, we were moving axis by axis. And the end effector, or the, the flange, was moving, uh, you, you cannot predict it really. Right now, you imagine that you are like at the flange and you're moving, or at the end of the arm tooling, and you will move that always in a straight line. That's the main difference between jogging using the joint movements and jogging using the frames. It's like with drinking a coffee. It is much easier for you to move all axes at the same time in a straight line than going using the joint movements one by one. Correct? So that's the main difference. Uh, that's something you need to remember. When you use the frames, you will always move according to the coordinate system, according to X, Y, and Z. When you, you are using joints, you will always move joint by joint. I hope you get it. If not, let me, down know, uh, let me know down in the comments that you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll try to explain more. Okay, moving further. So, now you know how the X, Y, Z is working, correct? So, what about the rotation stuff? You have those X, Y, and Z uh, buttons located a little bit below the XYZ buttons, the one uh, have the arrow around it. So that's rotating around the axis. And what does it mean? And how do you know that you're rotating around the axis? 
So as you can see, the names are the same. So you can rotate around axis X, axis Y, and axis Z. Okay, so when you hit, when you want to rotate around axis X, that means you want to rotate like this. But how do you know if it's plus or minus? With the regular axis, it's easy because it's, you know, that's the, that's the plus direction, that's the plus direction, and that's the plus direction. What about the rotation? There is also the way to know. Remember the right hand rule? So stay tuned. Take your right hand, grab it like this with the thumb pointing up. And now imagine those are the arrows on your teach pendant key. Now, if you want to know which way is positive, which way is negative, just point your thumb in the axis you want to jog. So we want to jog the X axis and you want to move positive. That's the arrow showing the positive direction. So when you jog into the X positive, that's how the robot is going to move. When you move negative, it's going to move the other way. What about the Y axis? The same thing. Y axis, thumb, Y axis, Y plus, Y minus. And the Z, I think we can follow, right? Z axis, your thumb, positive, negative. Pretty easy? It is easy, I have to say. Okay, so now let's practice a little bit more. Try to jog the robot in all of the direction. Try to jog, jog it X plus, X minus. Remember the right hand rule because it will apply to the other coordinate systems that we will talk about a little bit later on. Because for now, I want you to remember that the world coordinate system is always uh, located at the robot base. This is your base system, it never changes. So if you get to the robot, any of the robots, it will always jog it the same in FANUC. Second thing, remember about your right hand rule. Because that's the way you're going to define each frame coordinate system. And the third thing, remember about finding the direction for rolling around the axis. Okay, I hope you like that video. If so, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.